1998 and was my favorite car in my mainstay. The car behind us right now is the car that Mark Martin won the very first race with at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in 1998, and he's about to drive it again. Now the guy who found this car and restored it, Landon, is over there, and he's got a pretty crazy story of how he came to own this car, which is a uh, JR51, which is Jack Rouse chassis 51. Landon, you know, sends me a picture and asks me, hey, do you know anything about this car? Dude, that's JR51, that's my favorite car. And in uh, 1998, it was my favorite car in my mainstay. Man, we, we ran that car race after race after race because it was so special. How does this all start, Wait, the origin so of this car? This car starts two years ago or more, I found a guy on Facebook. He didn't have any pictures. He was just listing and, uh, for a friend because they were both older, you know? So the guy that originally owned it wasn't on Facebook. So this guy that I was friends with, like I said, he's an older gentleman. He listed a description of the car, but never put any pictures up of it. Well, I was interested in it. So I messaged him and I got some more info. Well, then I got some photos of the car and the way we found it, uh, or the way it was sitting was the last thing they ever did with it was they tested the car at Atlanta in 1999 and they had put the 2000 Taurus body on it but it was primered white and it had a big Ford decal on the hood and that was all it was. After that, I don't know why or where it went or you know why they didn't race it but that's the exact way it was found when I picked it up. The shocks are still on it from that test, the springs are still in it from that test, they're marked from that test. Wow. Uh, that's his original seat that was in it, the belts that were in it. Those belts and that seat were in it the day they built it because they're dated. So that belt, those belts and that seat and every everything else that's in the car that's dated was in the car the first time they built it and it went through every race and every win that the car had. How many wins is that? Four. Four. Yeah, it won this race, which was Vegas in 98, which is the very first cup race here. This was actually the very first tourist that won a points earning race. Because if you remember, I think Rusty Wallace won one of the duels or the 125 at Daytona that year, but that wasn't a points race. That was just for the qualifying order for the 500. Yeah, because we just did that video with Don Miller yep. talking about the origin of this body style right. Taurus. But this was the very first points earning win for a Taurus. Won here at Vegas, Texas, California, and Michigan. But it raced over 10 times and it finished second multiple times to Jeff Gordon. Uh, it almost won the Brickyard in 98. It was the gold Sin Power car that was this car. It ran the other Michigan race in 98. It ran Atlanta in 98. In 99, it only ran two races. It ran the Vegas race here again. And then uh, I think it ran the spring or the fall Michigan race, and that was the last time it raced in this configuration. But like I said, when we found it, it was primered white and everything. Um, and I was already, I became pretty good friends with Mark, so I had texted him a picture of the dash tag that's on it, because it has a, 50, a 051 tag over there on the far corner of the dash. And I said, hey man, do you remember this chassis? Because I had restored a Thunderbird prior to that, and it was an, an older chassis, and he didn't remember it. You know, the chassis tag on it was still there, but he didn't recall that car. I sent him a picture of this, it was like five minutes, and he's like, yes, I remember that car. I raced it a bunch, and that was my favorite car at Roush. So I went and picked it up right then. Like I didn't care if it had won, you know, whatever. I went and picked it up because he had told me that. I just was looking for one that he had raced because I was a fan since I was little. This was a car I saw when I was, you know, my son's age, five, six years old. So we went and picked it up, brought it back, started doing more research on it. And through finding the research out that we did, talking to Mark Moore, uh, Jimmy Finnick, which was the crew chief for Mark back then, uh, there was like nine or 10 crew members that worked on the car. Talked to all of them, they all had the same story on the car. And all I did was show them a tag on the dash. They all come back with the same story. Yeah, that's the car we won these races with. It was the best intermediate car we had, you know, all these different things. You know, how'd you find it? Where was it? And then the craziest thing was there's a guy that works at Roush now. His name's John Armbruster. And he got a hold of me because he knew that I had it. Or maybe I messaged him first, I can't recall. But he still works at Roush. He worked there back then too. He remembered it. And two or three of his buddies that still work there, they remembered it. And he actually found files in the archives of this car when it was in the wind tunnel. And he found wind tunnel photos of it. And when everybody realized that that was the car that we had found, that's when everything started ramping up, like, you know, doing this. And then I realized, hey, we got to restore it back to the 98 body, not the 2000 body that was on it. So we had to take it and have a new tail panel put on it. Uh, different hood, which is the 98 hood. That's the 98 tail panel. It's got a 98 front bumper. The front fenders had to be all redone in English wheeled. Uh, all that was done by Ronnie Hoover in uh, North Carolina. <laughs> Did he reference those wind tunnel pictures? So we weren't allowed to have the wind tunnel photos. Oh. So, but there was plenty of reference photos that I got from people of the car on track. Good? Perfect. If you were a little kid, you would be so happy. Yeah, that's like 
hopefully he screenshots this right here and he can post it on Instagram when he's older. If they're, if they're even using Instagram then, who, who freaking knows? Who knows It'll just be called be. the Graham Man. Yeah, something. <laughs> something weird, I'm sure. Maybe MySpace will come back, I don't know. This thing have an engine in it when you got it? So no motor or transmission, but uh, it did have the original radiator in it. Still had the rear end and the center section, all the, the axles were in the rear end. Uh, I mean, it had everything but the motor and trans. So we contacted Roush Yates, a friend of mine whose name's John McKinney. Uh, he's the one that just restored that Davy Allison 28 car that was at Talladega. Cool. Yeah. He is got good contacts over there, so he called them. They had that C3 that they just built and uh, had 10 laps of break-in on it. So I was fortunate enough to buy the motor and trans from uh, Roush Yates engines. This is like what the Lake Speeds engine. Yeah, it's, it's the same motor, it's a C3, yeah. Uh, I saw your video on that. The only difference is this one had just had all that work done to it that they're doing to his now, so. So what's the compression ratio? Uh, this one, it should be right at like 12 to one, 13 to one. Okay. Uh, I haven't personally checked it, but I take their word for it. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it runs really good compared to the other ones I've had. I've had three other cars that had a C3 in it, and then one that had a D3, which is the, the older, you could say, I guess, the, the brother to this engine. It's the same block, but newer heads. Yeah. Yeah, you, I mean, you've seen, I guess, maybe on the on Facebook when I found it. I know we were friends at that point, but I don't know if you knew I had the car. But if you would have seen the car when I first got it, compared to what it is now, you wouldn't believe it. Like I did see the pictures. Yeah. Uh, and I'll have to go back on there and harvest them to add them as B-roll to okay. this later. What are you going to do with this after this event? So What's after you? this, I would like to vintage race it a little bit, you know. Uh, if I can, you know, I'm not going to get too insane with it. I don't want to go and do like via or SVRA and HSR just because they run, you know, wheel to wheel. But and I'd like to display it some more too. I mean, everybody needs to see it. I mean, I would want them to see it, you know. Yeah, it's history. This is important. Mark, you know, I mean, we've talked back and forth a little bit. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe he would be interested in it. I don't know. He has two of his favorite cars. He owns the other one, and this is the other. Like he has two, 10 and 51, and he owns 10, and this is 51. Like, hey, it's for sale, but only if you're buying it. Yep. I mean, that's what I've told everybody. They're like, well, I've had two people, uh, you know, ask to buy it, and I told them it wasn't for sale. And then uh, a couple of my close friends asked me, you know, if I would sell it, what would it cost? And I said, I don't have a price for it, but there's, I mean, if he would be the only one I'd sell it to. I feel like that's the only fair thing to do, you know, and that would be, it would be a good hand, in good hands then, you know. Yeah. But what else is unique about this car? Are there any cool, like, old dates scribed into it? Like, I saw you had some stuff oh, on the yeah. radiator that... So, the radiator scribed here from other chassis that this radiator was in and the races that it ran. Uh, all the oil lines are scribed for this car, 51, that's the filter in. Then on the other end, it says motor. Uh, you can see here on the front of the distributor, it says Ralph Racing on it. Um... Even the oil cooler that sits under the radiator, which you can't see it now, it's got scribe dates in it. Um, this oil line's got a scribe mark on the bottom of it. Uh, a really cool one you can see is actually on top of the tack. You can see where they calibrated it, 8,500 to 9,000. What is that? 214.98. And then that RM is Richard Melantine. So Richard Melantine was the one that wired all these cars, and he also built the rear gears and transmissions for him. And his stamp is on the rear gear section as well, so it's still got the original center section that was raced in it. Wow. I mean, everything's like the ignition boxes, that's the original boxes that were in it. That's the original steering wheel, the steering wheel's marked, the boxes are original. Where's the wheel marked at? Right here, I'll actually pull it off and show you. So there's that, and then there, Wow, that's crazy. And this is a good, you can get a good view of that tag on the dash over there, the 51. Yeah. And you had to redo all the decals on the dashboard? Yeah, all that's new, the decals are, but the dash tag was there when I got it. And this, this, this is the coolest part, I think, of the whole car, that decal on the roll bar. Yeah. That says, it's supposed to say big brothers, big sisters. That decal was in this car the last, or when it ran here in Vegas in 99. And I have screenshots of that in-car footage that shows that decal right there in the same spot. Zip ties are the same, everything's there. So that's why I didn't take it out, because it's original to the car. That's really cool. But everything, like I said, everything was on it when I got it. The steering wheel was in it. These are the original antennas that were in it. Uh, 
You got your dummy camera? Yep, that the was little, on the car when I got out. The little, the little thingies. How about this boom tube? So I had to do all that. We have to ask you about the boom tube. Oh, I know y'all are big into that. So <laughs> the two, So I bought the car from the gentleman in North Carolina and he had an original left side exit exhaust, which are super hard to find. Cause I've tried to find them for other restorations I've done and it's hard for me to find them. And you could cut a right side up and flip some stuff and make it work. But he had that exhaust. And I was scared to death that when we built the car and put everything together, it wouldn't fit. And it fit just like where, it, that's where it fell and that's where it should be. So when this car was last used, did it have this type of boom tube on it or was it like the double pipe one? It was just like that. And Mark's cars back then always had driver side exit. And uh, I'm sure if you ask him about it, he'd probably tell you how hot and how bad it got. The brace that goes on top of the fuel cell, that black brace, yeah. that's original of the car and it's marked. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Restoring history. Oh, yeah, no problem. We greatly appreciate that. Awesome, thank you. I, it was a pleasure it's to do it. It's one of my favorites. Too, oh, yeah, so. absolutely. Thank you. Uh, the spoiler is also original to the car. So what's funny is in 98, when they first ran the Vegas race, there was a rule. It was a five and five rule. And I'm not 100% sure what the rule on the spoiler was, but the Taurus is, as you all know, now that you've done the whole video about the Taurus, it was extremely cheated, like because it was a four-door car, and they let Ford basically build what they wanted. Yeah. You know, they raised the rear quarters on it. They did a bunch of crazy stuff with the roof. Well, the rule back then was on the Taurus. I think it had a six and a quarter inch spoiler. So, right after the Vegas race, they chopped them on the spoiler. I think they took a quarter inch off of it. So this spoiler is original to the car, and it measures six and a quarter. So this is probably the spoiler that was on the car when it won in Vegas. Probably, I've seen a couple other his cars from back then that the spoiler, you could see where they had cut it and then they welded it back. Uh -huh. Because after a couple races, they went back to the six and a quarter. I'm not sure when and what time, but. Uh, this one never got cut. This no, I would driver. like to think this is the one that got, because I didn't put those marks in it, those were there. I'm sure it is. That's crazy that this is, this had the 2000 Taurus body on it, but it still had this wing. So yes. did this deck lid not change? No, so the only thing that changed on a 2000 Taurus was the bumper cover, because this is the 98, and the back window area is different. The 98 yeah. has this big, ugly, oval circle window. <laughs> yeah. I hate it, I hate it. <laughs> the, the 2000 had a nice square one. Yeah. But, you know, when we built the car, we wanted it right. So we put it back this way. And like I said, Ronnie Hoover, I want to give them credit, Ronnie Hoover did all the metal fab work. He built my windows. He did everything, and it's perfect. He did an amazing job. Brian Cram, uh, who did, he did some work for the garage shop too. He painted a couple, I think one or two of their cars. Yeah. He did the paint and body work. And then uh, Brian at CompCal yeah. in uh, North Carolina, he did all the decals. So everything was done over there by guys that have worked around these cars their whole life. Yeah, Brian did the decals for our Harvard cart. He did oh, a really your go kart, yeah, awesome. yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> So, I mean, as far as original original items in the car, you know, like the oil cover or the rear gear cooler cover, all that's original. That's the original oil box. And what's funny is the lid that's on the tank or on top of the box. Yeah. The in-car cameras, you can see that box. They never change it. That's the same box. Because that's got, I mean, it's that's a unique design. Like you would never. Yeah. There was only, that I know of, there was two chassis that had that style of oil box. And it was this one and the sister car to this car because they built this one and it was such a good intermediate car that they tried to build another one and copy it. And that was the next chassis in line, which was 52. Uh, which 52, its first race was the Winston in 98 and it actually won that race. Did Mark race that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It was the black Eagle One car. So Mark was the only guy who drove this car and never got past the Jeff Burger. No, sir, no, it never got past anybody. This is the only, the only, so even funnier, he was the only one that was in that seat up until like, Two weeks ago, I had a friend of mine come over that was his size to help me bleed the clutch. <laughs> and he was the first person to be in the car since Mark drove it last. And I've now gotten in it because I can pull the cover and cushion out of it and I can squeeze into it. I was wondering about that. When I it's saw you riding around the neighborhood, yeah. I was like, did he put a different seat in that or, or it's what? It's a pain, but it, I mean, I had to, my bruise, my ribs were bruised where that rib support was hitting me the whole time, but I, <laughs> I had to make it work. I could pull out a list of people that I've talked to that either worked on it or were around it. Even Chad Canals. We saw he him over there. He helped us push the car up here. And he was like, he's like, dude, I can't believe you found this car. I remember we were trying to beat this car every weekend. He's like, I remember. He said, I can't believe it's still around. He said, this is amazing. So. He was super cool about it, so. The people who do stuff and there's people who do it right. And you're one of the people who's doing it right. You're, you're validating your sources and 
making sure that the, oh, yeah. the, all the details are there. Like this is this is how you do it. This is not like you know some booger together yeah. tribute car. If you're gonna do it, you do it right. You do it like he did it. Yeah, we had all we also too when we found it. The bottom of the car had been you know sandblasted from where it raced so much, and the bottom had a, like some spots that had surface rust. So the entire bottom of the car was stripped off and repainted it's got fresh that like chassis gray color it was all repainted underneath the rear end was pulled out of it the truck arms were out of it the front suspension was out of it and they they sprayed the whole underside before they painted the outside of the car so it's all like it was going to be coming right out of the roush race so there's a bunch of neat stuff that's there like the shocks those were on the car when i got it and you can see on the back side they still have the atlanta test on it like you can see it says atlanta right here have you fired it up yet? It feels warm in here. Oh yeah, I fired it up. I'm fired up for your video if you want to. Yeah, fire it up. I hope they don't care that that guy's playing up here. Somebody playing? We don't want to listen to him anyway. <laughs> Ten cars still sounded like this. That's what I, I was, mean. I was four when this car raced, <laughs> and I vaguely remember, like I watched it with my dad, who's over here with us. Uh, he always <laughs> he started it off, and that's where the bug got put in me. I would watch it with him when I was a kid. So we've done the same with our son. He's five now, and he watches. We go to all the races, and he comes with us, and he watches it on TV. He was out there with me in the garage, you know. I was working on this thing till two or three in the morning, and, and the days like he had fall break and. He was out there with me. You know, he'd cr he would get on a creeper and roll under the car and help. When I built it and I bought it and I wanted to make sure it was right, I went like really deep into the rabbit hole and like doing my research. Cause you know, you never want to be wrong and you don't want people to tell you you're wrong. And you just want to know everything anyway. Right, exactly. You I just have that burn yeah. in you. I want to know every single yeah. thing that everybody has to say about this yeah. that ever touched it over that, the last 25 so years. That's something else my son did with me. Like we sat on our days off where he was home from school and I didn't have to work. He would sit in the living room and watch TV with me. And we would sit and watch the races from 98. like Just to see people talk about it? Just to watch for like in-car footage, you know, audio. There's audio from the like the uh, commentators, like Benny Parsons and all them. They were talking about the car, what it was, you know. They talk, hey, this is the same car he won these races with. This is the, they called it the West Coast car. So now the festivities are starting to ramp up. We're staying here with Matt. Hey guys, how you doing? The Matt Martin. <laughs> I don't know about the Matt Martin, but yeah, I'm out here with Dad, and uh, we got JR51 out here, and uh, it's going to be pretty cool. I think he's going to get to take it out on the track and be posting it on uh, social media. I run Mar Martin Archive uh, that you know focuses on uh, the history of Dad's career, so uh, check that out on Instagram and marmartinarchive.com. He's got lots of cool shirts, too. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot more planned uh, as well. So uh, all based on original uh, designs from the 90s. So uh, we've got a Win dixie one coming up. So that should be pretty big. So. Heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good to go. Yeah, this is something that I would have never thought about when I was five years old. It's crazy, Landon. It really is. Everything feel the same? Yeah. Unbelievable, bud. Yeah, this is just, uh, wow. I don't know if you're nervous. I'm about to start crying. I was real bad <laughs> nervous, but until they told me that they, I was going to follow those pace, those uh, Toyotas, you're okay. going to pull up in front, because I didn't know the pace, the lap speed, or nothing, you know. So I was a little bit nervous, but now all I got to do is just follow those guys. Man, it, yeah, this. Reliving. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And that's the original seat, the original belts, and everything. See the sticker on that roll bar right there? That sticker was in this car when you raced the car at Vegas in 99. I have screenshots of the in-car camera yeah, and that sticker is there. Big, yeah, big That's why I didn't take system. it out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was an, uh, a Valvoline uh, thing. Really? Yeah, it was something that I supported. I was going to ask you, this is kind of dumb, but there's a two pieces of Velcro on the seat. Did you have like a cup holder there or something or do you remember? 
I know you probably had a, a drink pouch, I think. No, you... not then. No, you didn't? Mm -mm. Yeah, I think the I think the drink holder would have been right here. I See think. The, your boxes, the radio, these are in it still, the radio boxes. Yeah. This this yeah. was here. I don't know if you remember having yeah. those in here. They call that uh, the nut cooler. I guess it works when you're going well, close I, to 200 miles an hour. Most guys didn't run it, but I did. It was My all guys a lot thought it was funny. They loved that. They loved it. That's the original hose and everything, man. It was all in here when I found it. The radio boxes, and if you pull this padding, the Butler built door pad, on the back side it's written Roush Racing 051. And the back of the seat has 051 on it. I had sent you those pictures it from did. Texas. Yeah. It's all there, man. It's crazy. It is crazy. I mean, this is, this is surreal to sit here and look out this windshield. And that's how you, I mean, I mean it's like, it's surreal. <laughs> I mean, it's like I never stopped doing it, you know, it's like, like the, the gap between then and now is all of a sudden disappears, <laughs> you know, it's just gone. Wow. Well, I hope you're happy with it. <laughs> I'm proud for you, buddy. I'm, I can't, I don't even know the word to use to describe you, all of this. You but. own something that is really special. Something that I wish I had. I mean, seriously. All right. All right, so flip that over to the on position. Yep. And then we'll put your master on. And that you're gonna flip the ignition. You may have to get a little gas, but you'll be all right.
everything broke, are you relieved? I hope so, yeah, for sure. <laughs> We couldn't be up there to watch it, but yeah, how dumb is that? We'll get a uh, we'll get a video of it. That's awesome, man. I can't believe it. Dust has settled, and we're gonna sit down with Mark and find out what it felt like. It was a different experience than I expected. Um, standing out next to the car, uh, the car was perfect, the body was perfect. I look at all how far the fenders are outside the tire on the front side, all the things that made the aerodynamics, you know, uh, not that the fenders couldn't be too fat at the top of the uh front tire how much you you know all those little details it felt like i was standing there next to the race car it felt like that that uh it was like a time capsule but i didn't think that much more about it until you know we started the car and the car the engine sounded really good it sounded right but then still not so much you know, you reach and you put it in gear and everything feels right. The gas pedal's in the right place. The seat's in the right place. You look out over the windshield, over the hood, and all that stuff was really familiar. Um, and you have to know that I haven't been in a race car since uh, November 2013, uh, or January 2014. I actually did the test for uh, Tony at Daytona, for Tony Stewart. So. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a little bit different, but then as we started coming up to speed, going down the back stretch and you start going through the gears, all that felt really comfortable, like familiar. And, you know, it's the racetrack and seeing the racetrack, and all of a sudden, it just felt like 24 years, that gap was gone. I mean, it felt like I was there. It just felt like 24 years ago. I really, I say, you know, all the time that I flip the switch off, that I'm not a race car driver anymore. I can't do it because I flipped the switch off. I can't, I couldn't do it. But there at that piece, at that time, I felt calm, comfortable, confident, like I could drive it off into turn three, lay dark it into the corner and just go. I mean, it just, it was like 24 years evaporated. It was gone. It was a really strange feeling. It was cool. But the coolest thing about the whole deal really was the fans' response. It's just been so overwhelming. Uh, so many people love seeing that golden era of NASCAR. It's not just our car, not just the six car. Um, it's that it's a whole, piece of era. whole era. It's the whole era. All the drivers, all the cars, the Bill Elliotts, the Rusty Wallaces, uh, you know, Ernie Irvins and, and uh, Davey Allison's, all those guys from from the 90s, the, the greats. And, you know, it's just, there's such a thirst and a hunger for that. And what I say about that is, that's great. Let's give them something to reminisce about. And then let's also celebrate the greatest racing that NASCAR's ever seen, and that's 2022. I haven't ever seen racing uh, in NASCAR on the level that we've seen this year. I love what we're seeing uh, on the track, uh, but I think that uh, the fans want to reminisce about the golden good old era.
yeah, you don't just have to shove it under the rug and pretend like it never happened. I think, I think it's really cool that more and more of that is being incorporated as time goes on and really hope that videos like this help perpetuate that to continue happening because it's cool. It is cool. <laughs> this is fun. I mean, I've never got to see that car on the track in person. I was too young, but just standing over there, seeing it, I was just like, God, I feel like I'm five years old again. It just, it just does that. Cars have a really interesting way of being able to do that. They do, and that, that is really what the majority of my fans remember me from, that red, white, and blue six car from, from 92 through, uh, through the end of 2000. Um, and I love that their response on it. And heck, man, I'm excited about, I, I really appreciate what uh, Chris Powell here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway uh, did with initiating this Legends program and every, all the personnel here with how good, kind they were to us and everything. Um, but I'm also extremely excited about next year. Rusty Wallace is gonna be their legend for next year. And I'm gonna be just as excited as I have been for this one. To have Rusty here and Rusty uh, going through all this stuff. Um, I've got stories that uh, I can't wait to tell on Rusty while, you know, because Rusty and I go back, all the way back to teenagers, racing in Springfield, Missouri every Friday night. Uh, you know, so that's exciting and, and kudos to uh, Chris Powell for having the vision to understand that um, that the fans want to see that. And then it was so crazy after I agreed to do this, you know, six months later, uh, Landon you know, sends me a picture and asks me, hey, do you know anything about this car? And I'm like, dude, that's JR51. That's my favorite car, you know, from 1998. There's, it's the probably the second most important car of Roush Racing's history. The first important car was JR10 that we won, uh, you know, our first race together. And it has an incredible history. And we're going to do some stuff on that car later but the next car is man that car won four races four races in in uh, 1998 and was my favorite car my mainstay man we we ran that car race after race after race because it was so special and the restoration on that car is absolutely perfect so the body is perfect the decals is so beautiful and that car didn't race get sold to other teams and race ARCA and get chopped up and you had to restore it back. That car was in almost perfect condition when, I mean, not perfect condition, but I will say all the parts were still there. The seat was still in it, you know, the pedals there. You, the, the steering wheel hasn't been moved. The steering column hasn't been moved. You don't find that because you know all my stuff's a little weird you start putting any other driver in there and everything has to change because i'm so little but nobody else ever raced that car it's it's an amazing piece of history and it's so cool to have been able to share that with the fans here so i didn't know that you would agree to do this before that car was found that's even cooler so that it you were already supposed to be here doing this and then that car just happens to just present itself to you and it's like the car from this track. I mean, you can't you can't rewrite that to be any more perfect. It's crazy. Yeah, I agreed to do this over over a year ago and, and then, you know, about six months ago is when, you know, he uh, texted me about the car, messaged me about the car. So, yeah, I was almost, you know, almost uh, probably nine months ahead of time, you know, for, of him finding that car, I'd already agreed to come and do this. So it was, a, it was really a, a, a cool way that it all came together and uh, we just had a blast. What car were you supposed to drive before that one? Oh, we weren't gonna drive and we were gonna have a car here. Oh, really? Yeah, they were just gonna honor me as a legend and we were gonna do all this stuff and there wasn't any, well, we're gonna be in a car. Now, I think we've set a precedent. I would expect to see a number two, you know, uh, number two car here 
uh, next year for Rusty just because we set a precedent. But uh, no, there wasn't a plan for a car. I called when I found out the car existed. Uh, I said, do you think it would be possible to get that thing ready by October? He said, I think so. Well, I called Chris Powell, the president of the Speedway, right then. I said, hey, here's the deal. Here's what could happen. Would you be interested in helping make this happen? And he's like, absolutely. We'll do whatever we need to do to help make it happen. So, you know, obviously they had to send a transporter to get the car and bring it from Tennessee all the way out here um, and and move it all around and all that stuff and then Landon and, uh, you know, and his family, they were able to fly out here and be a part of it. But all of that was really the Speedway. Um, and uh, I think it added a tremendous amount to the whole thing. The whole, the whole legend thing really took on a new life when you had the winning car and you know from the golden era and just having the the fans just i mean they just went crazy it was cool i've forgotten there was the rest of the race happening honestly we got here this morning we're like we're just here for this like sounds excited about this and like oh wait there's a whole race gonna happen after this <laughs> did you want to go faster than you were going when you were going around the track no no but i felt like i could if i wanted to and that was a surprise to me <laughs> yeah, so so I felt like I could have if I wanted to, but that was a surprise to me because I normally, you know, I'm not interested. I hadn't spun my tires since 2013, since I got out of a race car. I mean, I just, it's not in me. I, I flipped that switch off and I'm done. I'm not going to drive anything fast. You know, people always ask me to come to a racetrack and drive a car just for fun. It's like, that's not fun to me. I'm not interested in that. I'm done with that. I equate that with pressure. See, I didn't drive race cars for fun. I drove race cars to win. And I had to, in order to win, I had to beat some pretty doggone good, <laughs> good race car drivers, like the greatest ever. And so I had to push myself really, really, really hard. And when you push yourself that hard, um, it takes a lot of the fun out of it and uh, then the fun that you do experience is when you are lucky enough to to beat all those guys it's euphoric but the rest of the time is is a grind what is coming up for uh, Matt and Mark Martin archive pretty soon uh, we have so many things in the work I, Matt does I've helped him with some of this stuff uh, to kind of get it going off the ground not only is uh, not only do we have some really cool shirts that are fixing to hit, it's got some killer artwork and our fans are going to go nuts when they see that. But long term, uh, we have uh, very historic die casts in the works that are going to be manufactured and be on uh, markmartinarchive.com um, as well. And then longer term than that, we're right uh, knee deep in the middle of a really neat book it's not about i won this race and i won that race I, my fans know i won a few races it's not about that it's about my childhood it's about what shaped me into the person that i became um, it's about my failure uh and how devastating it was in my life in 1982 and 83. Um, it's about you know my family uh, it's about the struggle yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there that I've never told. And when I raced, there were, you had to be politically correct to some degree. And you couldn't tell some things because it might bother or hurt somebody at Ford or it might, you know, uh, irritate a sponsor or it might hurt Jack Roush's feelings for that matter. I'm able to tell it all now. You know, I don't really have to answer to anyone anymore. I'm super excited about this book. It is Matt's vision. He's the one that is behind the whole thing. It's going to be pretty darn cool. And in the meantime, when we started looking at, or when he started looking for photos for the book, oh, what a treasure trove of photographs that people have never seen. 
you know, from all the way from the very beginning of my career to the end of the career. So there's so much you can't involve that, put those in the book. So just a few photos in the book. Because it's going to be a long book as it is. There's a lot of information in this thing that fans have never heard or knew about. So we're going to do a incredible, incredibly cool high-end ta coffee table book as well. And that's really exciting. Um, the photographs are just absolutely unbelievable. So that is, uh, all that stuff is down the pike. It will be far beyond the, the die cast. The die cast are, are probably summertime 2023. Uh, we wish the book would be summertime 2023, but it may, it's probably gonna be a little longer than that. Uh, there's still an awful lot of work to do, to be done on it. But we have, uh, uh, we have an incredible author. My favorite author, motorsports author is doing doing the book, and Matt has been a big part of, in the direction of it. And so, uh, in the meantime, just stay tuned to markmartinarchive.com. Matt's got new merchandise going on there all the time. It's right behind you. That guy just uh, busted that power pole with the trailer. I was but, afraid that those power poles could get hit pretty easily. That was bad. Yeah. It's crooked now. <laughs> uh, but I guess I got a different question for you. We know you watch a lot of the videos we do. What is your favorite video that is not one of the ones that you are in that you've watched? <laughs> well my favorite videos that that you've done i have a lot of them but my favorite ones are the ones you did on the newell because i'm into motorhome so much and i think everybody should go back and watch those so cool to see you learning and tearing into those things and your mechanical ability and and your just being able to look at something and figure out how to fix it is uh, is amazing uh, some of the stuff with your Escalade, you know, it was phenomenal as well. But I was intrigued by the Newell stuff because that was outside of your uh, wheelhouse to some degree. Uh, but your latest stuff has been absolutely incredible. Home and Moody stuff, Lake Speed stuff. Uh, yeah, Lee, that Morgan, you know, McClure, Porker. I mean, every video you do right now is you're knocking the lights out it's like people don't even know a lot of the like the other stuff on there because it's so wide there's so many different kinds of things and it, it pretty much just boils down to we just make videos about stuff that we like to do and that's that's it whether it's working on something or old nascar it's just you know it's really cool to hear that you enjoy watching like everything i watch everything i watch everything you do it's you know i mean uh, i'm only subscribed really to two channels yours and and RV, uh, with andrew Steele, um, and because you know i just i'm totally uh taken in by everything that you do i mean uh, you know we, whether it's working working on the escalade or working on one of your other car projects oh that was a crazy when you guys were stripping out the uh the roles i mean i'm fascinated i I don't know how in the world you'll ever be able to put that car back together. <laughs> Holy cow. I, I don't know if we can. It might be too toxic. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that's amazing, too. The Rolls Project. I mean, holy cow you're really an interesting channel it's no wonder that you've grown and blown up i, I think you maybe had seventy thousand subscribers when i got on board and uh it's amazing where you've come but you're you're going to keep going because you're just producing really cool stuff well, thank you you're a big help to that if you saw the, the statistics of the growth behind the videos that you've been in it's like the some of the best ones like it's, it's just crazy the the reaction that well, everybody people have. yeah everybody that is a fan or is interested in what happened or what they see in this video should go back and really watch the hometown video because you had the vision to to come there and to look at the old race shops and talk about the old stuff that i don't know that 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 content is nowhere else i mean you're the only guy that really has that content some other content about the museum but you know is out there but you know my my race shops my 
my hometown, all that stuff is pretty incredible what you, what you put together there. You kind of invented that concept because that wasn't part of the plan when we went to come to the museum. We were just like, where was your dad's little trucking company at? And you're like, oh, come on, I'll just show you. And then I was thinking of a, a title for it, like it's Mark Martin's Hometown History Tour. And then I was like, we could do this with more people. Like there's, there's an unlimited amount of that. And there we did is. it with Kenny Wallace. Yeah. And it's just like, you you opened the door for that. That wasn't even my idea. Well, I loved your, your one with Rusty because, you know, I've got stories on Rusty. I mean, we go all the way back to, to teenagers in Springfield, Missouri. And uh, we came up battling each other since we were teenagers. It was so cool to see you do his because and go to the Blue Mac shop and all that stuff. Because I was around, but I never went there. Never went to the shop. But I drove by it, you know, back in the day when I was racing there. But it's just really cool stuff, and nobody else is doing it. 